the way the book is organized is fairly straightforward. We start here with um, a picture of the phoenix by Xu Bing. And for me, it represented a sort of conceptual framework for all the works that had come beforehand in the sense that starting from the first project, um, I worked from modules and tried to put them together to create a different whole. And I found this theme consistent throughout the rest of the projects, but what this particular project did for me, um, the Phoenix in particular, was that it challenged the idea of um, convention and it used materials in a, in a very interesting way to express different ideas um, that are mediated by the scale at which you view the model. And so that was a form of a phrasis that I wanted to incorporate in the final model as I tied together the thematic scheme of it all. So moving through the book, um, here we have a table of contents starting with the first project, um, going down. Here I wanted to uh, talk about um, sort of Arnold Schoenberg's influence on the work. The particular song that I chose was actually inspired by a poem written by Richard Demel. And here I go through some of the ideas that he had explored. And something else that I was interested in was sort of the shapes that were created by the, the music pieces that he played. And so um, one of the things I wanted to accomplish through that was to translate these into visuals. And so that's the comparison over here. Now moving on, um, these are some of the sketches I had done. And I wanted to explore this idea further by looking at some other visuals, more abstract shapes occurring in other areas to find where um, this can find a sort of metaphorical translation. And for me, that had been sort of the overarching way that I had abstracted rules from the design. Now going on over here, um, I work pretty well with things visually. So in one way, doing this symbolic progression was a way of discovering um, what kind of rules can be taken out of the pictures and also applied to the project, sort of abstracting the effect it had on the nervous system as opposed to approaching it very literally. And this was kind of the, the process it took um, to, to arrive at the final model. Now the first few models that were made looked like this, and as you can see here they start to explore the idea of, of bending the wood, but um, eventually they evolved into these modules that uh, repeated these operations but on a more intricate way. So these were the initials. And so what came out of this was the idea of um, experimenting with different ways that these wave-like structures could be, could be created. And um, what came out of the project was an iteration of all these different ways that waves could be made, eight in total. Then the next step was then to ask how could these different shapes be put into dialogue. And what we see here is the result of that. Now the final book has um, other things included and also with um, more more color and depth in them. Now translating those ideas to the digital world, this is what came out of it. And moving on to the next project, we have the point vector service uh, concept. Now here I extracted the scene from the rush down the staircase. Um, I was particularly interested in that because for me it implied the sense of the capacity of the staircase, um, the sense of imminent danger, and also the fact that people could only move in one direction um, because moving back would be dangerous for their lives and nearly impossible because of the crowd. 
Now, moving on, I was also very inspired by Eisenstein's philosophy on his film, which was the idea of combining the grandeur of the Renaissance with the technology of the machine age. And even though those two ideas seem strikingly different, I tried to uh, also create a progression of images that resembled this uh, confluence of ideas and so from here we see the Renaissance and that's slowly moving to the more machine age um, architecture that came out of the period. Now what was eventually born out of that were these sketches. Now the sketches for this particular project were done very intuitively. Um, they were meant to capture sort of the emotional feel that were evoked by Eisenstein's philosophy on film, the montage, and his overall approach to um, his projects. Now later on, I was also very interested in ways that um, computer programs could be used to um, express these ideas in new ways. Now one way I wanted to express this idea of continuity and progression was through the triangulation, the Delaunay component, which um, pointed to that was connected to three dots at a time to create this triangular structure. Now once combining them, they formed um, these panels on the side. Now the challenge then was how to configure them together in an interesting and meaningful way. Now the most literal interpretation of it was to create it into a staircase, and so this was born of that idea. But then to sort of bring that idea to life again, um, it was decided that the other panels would be bent, um, distorted, cut, and turned into a sort of curtain wall facade. Now what eventually came out of that was this overlaying of different structures starting from um, a less intricate, a wider, more, or less deliberate rather, um, steps evolving into more intricate um, triangulations. Now, something unique to this was also the fact that I had cut holes between them to sort of emphasize the intricacy of the different components. And moving on to the third project. Um, now, El Bulli's uh, particular dish um, the one that did the spherification was particularly of interest to me. Um, so here I explored the different ways that he had come up with his different cooking ideas um, through experimentation, through def defamiliarizing us with the original concept of cooking. And I think that is what enabled him to reach the, the status of artist that he had gone to. Now over here we see a, a time um, transformation diagram of the liquid parmesan gnocchi and eventually I wanted to apply this idea. Now initially the, these were some of the initial um, concepts that I'd come up with. Now over here we see very clearly the, the, whoops, sorry, the tendency um, to map out our expectations for existing places based on the function that we're already used to. Now, if we go back to the idea of the no-key, um, Ferran Adria very clearly expresses the idea that Viktor Shklovsky was writing about in his concept of estrangement, which was defamiliarizing us from the ideas that we originally attach to a lot of objects. And so the idea was to enable the space to be seen for what it was on its own, rather than having us project an image um, of our expectations for it. Rather, I also wanted the experience of it to highlight how we often experience the tendency to project what we think of a space onto the space before we even experience it. So I tried to express that through the different tunnels that are inherent in this project and how you could climb from one area to another, um, not really knowing where you are about to go or knowing what particular function it serves. And from that experience of defamiliarization, the project in itself is actually the process of perception, uh, much more so than perhaps the, the physical model itself. 
Now, I wanted to express that in the digital world by creating these various tunnels um, that express similarly what this was about. Now, over here, when we see the different lines um, from the the projections, they really just they really speak to the poetry of finding different um, ways to navigate the space that are typically unusual to the user. And going on to the fourth project, this one had the most um, turns and um, ideas of evolution in terms of planning on the ideas that I wanted to stick with in the end. Now at first I was very interested in the development of New York. Now here we see an old town map and how that has eventually evolved to this 3D rendering that is quite commonplace in the architecture world. Now another trend that um, stood out to me from this was the progression of technology and how technology has been adapted to express ideas that have been already current for a very long time. Now one particular trend in technology that, is, that um, stood out to me was the idea of data collection. Now, as you can see here, although in the past we had the idea of implied neighborhoods in New York, the data collection actually expresses and reflects um, the phenomenon of these implied neighborhoods. And it was very interesting culturally how this was solidified by um, people's interactions and raised the idea of how people actually do have quite a lot of um, agency in the way the city is shaped. Now, I wanted to express this idea through um, the through by abstracting these various rules into a collage. Now, over here, what we see then is um, different components of the city kind of shrunk down to the scale of a single model. Now, this was more a thought experiment rather than um, what came out of it at the very end. And then what proceeded after that was then this ethereal feeling that I wanted to express through the, the digital model, how from the top and from the side you would see different views, and that speaks to the state of New York City being ever in flux, um, kind of ever evolving, although it might escape our observations at first glance. Now moving on, um, this part expresses the different um, components of the of the metaphor that I wish to apply to the city. And actually, I'll show the, the final one that I'm uploading to Courseworks. I think that would better um, capture what I'm about to talk about.